In industrial systems, milliseconds matter. A single delayed sensor reading or missed event can result in everything from downtime to safety issues to millions in lost revenue. And that's why enterprises are moving to event-driven architecture, or EDA. Hi, my name is Christopher Sandoval. I'm a product marketing and developer relations expert, and I'm here to make your product and your marketing just a little better. So today, I'm going to break down what EDA is, why industrial and enterprise solutions are moving towards it, and how you can adopt it without getting buried in noise. So what is EDA? Well, event-driven architecture flips the script. Instead of being request response, it takes real-time actions and turns them into events. And those events are then sent to users or systems who are listening for them. Think of it like a factory floor. Instead of waiting for a manager to do a full round around the floor, the machine raises its hand and says, hey, something happened. And the manager is just sitting in their office waiting for the update. Now that change in paradigm is hugely powerful. It's not just a buzzword, it has some real world benefits. It helps organizations make faster decisions because it's using real data. Real-time processing means you can get real-time insights and act in real time. This also makes the system supremely scalable. New services can subscribe to events easily and bypass all of the code complexity in traditional systems. And that agility is why companies ranging from Netflix to Tesla production facilities rely on EDA. And nowhere is EDA more important than in industrial, IoT, and manufacturing. Consider this, in any industrial system, there are hundreds of machines taking thousands of actions, and each of those machines have vectors, variability. For instance, a machine that stamps metal might report things like vibration, offset between the material and the die, the relative pressure of the machine, electrical current variation, and everything in between. And all these data points can be collected by the EDA systems to do a wide range of things. For instance, predictive maintenance. You can use a vibration sensor to trigger a maintenance workflow. So if you start seeing extreme vibration in a machine, you know that it's likely going to fail soon. You can do it for things like safety monitoring. For instance, gas detection events or backflow, you can instantly shut down valves and alert operators that there's a problem. EDA also unlocks things like supply chain tracking, it scans published events that update inventory in real time across multiple sites. That gives you incredible visibility into both the efficiencies and the inefficiencies of your system. And these aren't hypothetical. EDA is being deployed at scale in industrial orgs today. But it should be noted that like any system, EDA is not perfect. It does have some pitfalls that you need to be aware of. For instance, event storming. Now event storming happens when there's too many noisy events that aren't being filtered out. For instance, not all vibration is bad. Some machines are meant to have vibration. Vibrating tables are part and parcel of some manufacturing processes. So if you're reporting every single time that machine vibrates, well, you're just gonna be drowned in noise. There's also issues of lack of governance. Without schemas or versioning or trustworthy vendors that manage all of this, event chaos can quickly spiral and your EDA system can basically just become a megaphone that is giving you static. There's also the reality that a lot of industrial systems already have integration debt. Legacy systems often weren't designed for event streams and that creates a ton of friction. And while there are some amazing providers like FlowFuse that are helping bridge that gap, it is still an institutional problem that you should be aware of. So let's talk about best practices for enterprise and industrial EDA. So to get the most out of EDA, you need to do a few things. First of all, you need to start with high value events. Focus on the events that drive the most ROI or have the most potential for damage. Don't try and consume all the events at once. Figure out which events actually matter to you and build out your systems to support them. You should also look into adopting event brokers or streaming platforms. Tools like Kafka and MQTT can get you going, but there's also a ton of providers that are low code that are built for industrial purposes like Flowfuse. You should also be building governance in early. Use clear schemas, observability, and documentation to keep things maintainable. Solutions like DocuSource are really easy and really cheap to get your documentation going. But you can also use things like OpenAPI to state your schemas. But you should also be doing everything you can to bridge the old and the new and understand that that is a problem. The reality is that especially in industrial use cases, these control systems are typically legacy. And the people who work on them typically have years of institutional knowledge that maybe don't convert as easily to the API or the software space. So use integration layers to connect those legacy industrial control systems into the modern event streams and document, document, document. 
The challenge isn't about getting more data, it's about reacting to it effectively. And that is where EEA shines. If you're working with event-heavy enterprise systems or industrial production systems, you need to ask yourself, are you still batch processing yesterday's data? Or are you acting on today's data as it's generated? If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And of course, you can follow me here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.